What's with all the billionaires now going to space? We just had Richard Branson with Virgin Galactic, Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin, and perhaps Elon Musk with SpaceX soon. Why? Is it good for the rest of us? It's probably going to fail. I don't know about you, but when I first watched the Richard Branson video, I was like, eh. Eh. It really didn't do much for me, and that got me thinking, what did people think when they saw Neil Armstrong land on the moon? Oh, by the way, if you're a moon landing denier or you think the Earth is flat and space is fake, this video isn't for you. So yeah, I generally feel that people in July 1969 watching a person land on another celestial body, just let that sink in, felt completely amazed and that it was and might still be the most significant collective moments of their lifetime. Sure, they had been building up to it with previous missions, you know, first going all the way around the moon and back, and then almost landing on the moon and back. But all of that happened within a few weeks. If you were in your 20s watching it, commercial flights had really only started in your childhood. And now some guy was hopping along on the freaking moon. But fast forward 50 years and now we're launching small satellites into space every other day. You can watch the SpaceX launches live on YouTube, but I bet not many people watch it because it's just whatever. I even tuned in live for the Mars helicopter drone, and Mars is insane because you can see the surface of the moon with the naked eye, it's right there. I mean, kind of. But Mars is a tiny dot in the sky, and when the images of the drone flying finally loaded, all three of them, again, eh. and I know some people who are more into science, and I'd like to think that I am, would have watched that and absolutely loved it. But I think I can speak for the average person here, not many people cared or remember it even happened. So going back to space billionaires, Virgin Galactic is actually quite affordable. It's only $250,000 for a ticket, an absolute bargain. But as you saw in a Richard Branson video, that really just gives you three minutes in zero gravity. You're in a tiny bus, float around, look at the earth, then you have to get back in your seat and land. Virgin Galactic is a little different from the other private space companies out there because they use a two-stage launch. First, the rocket is taken in high altitude with a conventional jet engine plane, and then it drops it and the rocket has a roughly 25 second burn and that's it, you're in space. About 600 people have booked a ticket already, including celebrities like Tom Hanks or Justin Bieber. But if you want to ride with Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk company, it's tens of millions. Some Japanese billionaire had bought a seat on Jeff Bezos' flight, with him actually, for $28 million. And then this guy had to cancel and move it to a later date due to scheduling conflict. Yeah, right, what better did you have to do that day than fly to space with the richest man on Earth? Sorry guys, but I have clay pottery that day, it's not gonna work. Ah, uh, yeah. Apparently some kid replaced him. That must have been one hell of an elevator pitch. You're in a small cabin for a few hours with Jeff freaking Bezos. Listen, Jeff, while I have you here, I have an idea for an app. You got a minute? He's obviously the son of a billionaire. Daddy, I want another pony. Oh, and our friend Jeff also took this really old lady on his ride. So we really have the full spectrum of ages. All in a rocket that looks like a giant... He also had the audacity after the flight to make this comment. I also I want to thank... Uh, every amazon employee and every amazon customer because you guys paid for all this so <laughs> yeah that's funny i mean technically they have all these dollars that didn't go into their salaries had to go somewhere just look at him in that hat channeling tommy lee jones in space cowboys i think this japanese guy is actually really smart he wants to see a few more guinea pigs go up there before him or not he's actually a space nut he booked a ticket with SpaceX also to go around the moon in 2023. And he's also going to the International Space Station this year, apparently, where he aims to spend 12 days. I mean, if that's what you're into. So how does this look in the public eye? Let's start by listening to Richard Branson's obviously rehearsed speech once they got into orbit. To all you kids down there, I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now, I'm an adult in a spaceship with lots of other wonderful adults looking down to our beautiful, beautiful Earth. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. 
Are you now inspired to be a billionaire? You know, it used to be just the mega yacht, the mansion, the private jet. But now that there's space involved, well, that changes everything. I see his point. And again, that's probably how the human race felt for a second when we walked on the moon for the first time. You know, we had the cold in Vietnam War and this was a way to bring us all together. But this doesn't feel like this is it. It used to be NASA and government entities exploring space. And sure, we got some great technology advancements out of it, like GPS, for example. But now this just feels like rich dudes bored with what's on Earth looking for a thrill. Many astronauts have said that seeing the Earth from space changes you and your perspective, especially in terms of how you then feel the need to preserve it. Which is a good thing because rich people will save the planet, not poor people. Things that are better for the environment usually cost more money. So maybe this is a good thing and these billionaires will start donating to climate change charities. The irony is that space flight is obviously really bad for the environment because of how much fuel you burn. One rocket launch produces 300 tons of CO2 and I know when you compare it to how the airline industry pollutes, it's nothing, but it looks like the goal is to increase those space flights year on year. The public perception is never going to be good on this, at a time when there's so many better places here on Earth to spend money on. This article from the Washington Post argues that these private space companies create jobs. Hmm, I wonder who owns the Washington Post? I don't know, I feel that perhaps when an international effort lands somebody on Mars, I guess that will probably be another Neil Armstrong moment and bring us all together. But right now is probably the worst time since 2008 for billionaires to measure who's got the biggest rocket. Especially if you consider that these might just be big PR stunts. What do you think? Are you into this or is this a complete waste of money? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It's free. See ya.